when we ask for cash, the natural comparison point, well, that's disposable income. It's other things that I spend cash on. When you ask me for a gift of cash, I'm going to think about well, what I just spent at Starbucks. That was another cash gift. If you ask for a gift from assets, that's very different because that natural comparison point is going to be our wealth holdings. That is a large reference point. Moving donors from giving only out of disposable income towards giving out of their wealth can be transformational. It's the basic idea that if you're asking for cash, you're asking small. Now, we can put a bunch of numbers on the ask, but the idea is this. Wealth is not held in cash. It's held in non-cash assets, and if you're asking from the cash bucket, you're asking from the small bucket, regardless of the numbers you put on that ask. How small is that bucket? Well, census data shows that if we just look at financial assets, so we're excluding real estate here, just look at the financial assets held by families, only about 2 to 3% is actually held in cash, checking accounts, saving accounts, money market deposit accounts, and so forth. All the rest of it, 97% or more, it's held in things like stocks, bonds, retirement accounts, life insurance, and mutual funds. Those asset gifts can feel relatively smaller. For the wealthy donor, if you ask for the same gift from assets, where it's a really tiny share, rather than asking for it from disposable income, where it constitutes a very large share, it can reduce the relative perception of financial loss.